वेलकम बैक टूडेज क्लास वी वुड अंडरस्टैंड न्यूट्रिशन इन एनिमल्स इन द फर्स्ट क्लास वी टॉक्ड अबाउट अ वेरी इंट्रोडक्शन इन द स्टार्टिंग इफ यू रिमेंबर दैट वी टॉक्ड अबाउट मोड ऑफ न्यूट्रिशन अंडर मोड ऑफ न्यूट्रिशन वी से देर आर टू मोड्स ऑफ न्यूट्रिशन ऑटोट्रॉपी एंड हेट्रोट्रॉपी सो इन द लास्ट क्लास वी डिस्कस वॉट वॉज ऑटोट्रॉपी विच अकर्स इन द प्लांट्स एंड वी टॉक्ड अबाउट द प्रोसेस ऑफ फोटोसिंथेसिस टूडे वी वुड फोकस ऑन हेट्रोट्रॉपी एंड दिस हेट्रोट्रॉपी मेनली विद रिस्पेक्ट टू ह्यूमन बींग्स वुड बी आर डिस्कशन फॉर टूडे नाउ वेन वी टॉक अबाउट एनिमल न्यूट्रियट्स अगेन इट्स इन द फॉर्म ऑफ कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स फैट्स विटामिन मिनरल्स एंड वॉट अकर्स इज अ प्रोसेस ऑफ डाइजेशन दैट इज breaking down the complex molecules that are present into simpler molecules that could be seen so that's a very simple definition to understand what is digestion this process of digestion occurs through a system which is known as digestive system now what is the kind of intake that the animals do let's say bees bees take nectar from the honey you have snakes that swallow the whole organism similarly we have the process of chewing starfish what it does is it basically attacks the organism within the shell breaks off the shell moves or enters into the organism and it pops out its stomach to attack the organism capture the organism and then retreats back its stomach so that's how a kind of starfish works so that those are the kind of functionings that could be seen for the various organisms and uh, the process of consuming food for the various organisms now when we come on to human beings we say digestive system is the most important system that we understand and this system takes place through the elementary canal now what are the basic inputs are the basic points we need to remember so this digestive system would be classified or with the help of this model we have here so what we have is the initial system which is here i'll mark as 1 2 3 then you have the middle one that's the 4 outer ones that's the 5 and the lower most that is the 6 so the first part is the buccal cavity or the mouth region the second part is the food pipe which is also known as esophagus the third is the stomach all the enzymes that are secreted from nearby glands the fourth is the small intestine the fifth is the large intestine and the sixth is the rectum and the anus now this all these walls of the stomach the salivary glands uh, in the buccal cavity secrete enzymes that digest or break down the food from the complex form into simpler form so this diagram again depicts the same thing now i have a movement of food particle that is taking place so as you can see food is entering going through the esophagus into the stomach small intestine finally into large intestine and through the rectum it moves out as fecal material so that's how you have the movement of the food particle that takes place so that's again very very important to understand now coming on to understanding each part separately so let's first talk about buccal cavity or the mouth area it's the place where ingestion of the food takes place or the first entry of the food takes place so food is chewed grinded into smaller parts there are teeth within the mouth to chew this food there are four types of teeth that we talk about the front ones as incisors surrounding the front you have two canines then you have premolars and molars premolars and molars help to grind the food canines have help to tear the food and incisors help to cut the food so incisors basically cut the food canines tear the food and premolars and molars help to make them uh, further small and grind the food children have milk teeth which are 20 till the age of 6 to 8 years commonly and then you have permanent teeth that comes up with the adult human being which are 32 in number teeth are rooted into the region of the mouth which is known or the region where the teeth goes in is known as gums the teeth have root that goes in or penetrates into the gums and this root is supplied by blood vessels as well as the nerves now in this region as you can see the two blue dots here these are the salivary glands which 
break down the starch into sugar now a very interesting example i take two examples of rice one is a normal rice and one is a chewed rice so chewed that is chewed in the mouth now when i take a normal rice it would change its color with iodine because i know it has starch in it and it would turn blue black but when i take a rice which has been chewed in my mouth i take that as a sample that rice would not give me a blue black color why because in the mouth in presence of salivary glands you have starch that is broken down into simple sugars and then you do not have starch any more and therefore the uh, the chewed rice will not give you blue black color with iodine or will not change the color with iodine the most common reason for tooth decay is this only so you have the breaking down of the starch into sugar that takes place usually you have the acids that are released and mainly chocolate soft drink sweets and sugar products affect the decay of the tooth besides the tooth you have another important uh, component in the mouth which is tongue that helps in the movement of the food now you have the various zones of the tongue the backmost zone you have the bitter taste towards the side of it you have the sour taste towards the frontmost you have the sweet taste and on the other corners besides the sweet you have the salty taste so you have the four ta taste zones that are seen now sometimes you might have seen you might have hiccups while eating or the food is stuck up that's because the food pipe is there and closer to the food pipe you also have a wind pipe and that food pipe and wind pipe have a kind of common va valve or opening and if there is a kind of hiccup or something that food particle rather than going into the food pipe moves into the wind pipe and causes a uh, choking or cough or hiccups so that's a kind of common problem that occurs when the food moves into the wind pipe rather than the food pipe now food pipe is also known as esophagus under the food pipe you have a wave like movement that takes place and this wave like movement is known as peristalsis that is very important and with it is with this contractions that the food tends to move down enters into the third that is stomach stomach is a j shaped uh, structure which is the widest part of this whole alimentary canal as you can clearly see you have the inner lining that separates mucus and this mucus protects the stomach uh, the next important thing is you have digestive juices that are secreted which break down the food into simpler forms now how this stomach was discovered is again an interesting case a man known as alex martin was badly hit by a shot brought to an american doctor who was known as beaumont and uh, that uh, hit he uh, took out but there was a hole that was created and it was badly bleeding during that time now even when he tried to seal off this movement could find there was uh, there was basically churning of the food that was taking place in the stomach and it was slowly moving in and out and therefore he discovered there is some organ within the body that helps in breaking down of the food that we consume and basically process or absorb that and so it was a kind of accidental discovery of a stomach that could be seen the next is the small intestine very very important digested food is absorbed in the blood vessels this intestine is divided into three parts duodenum jejunum and ileum now duodenum is the first part jejunum is the middle part and ileum is the last part this is very important to understand in jejunum you have the villi that are seen and basically what happens is you have uh, the fully digested food particles so you have the carbohydrates and the proteins that are totally absorbed in the jejunum still what is unabsorbed is absorbed in the ileum duodenum is the first part where the food that comes from the stomach it is known as time it enters into duodenum and uh, it basically receives uh, enzymes from gall bladder so liver again if we say is one of the largest organs of the body and 
this liver stores bile this bile is secreted from ga gall bladder and that affects the duodenum or the digestion process in duodenum again in duodenum you have pancreas that provide digestive juices so this is blue colored is liver below it you have gall bladder that stores then you have uh, pancreas here that also supply below the stomach a kind of creamy colored uh, structure that could be seen is the pancreas and that again supplies the digestive juice to the small intestine a very important thing to know about small intestine is it is nearly 7.5 meters long and a lot of winding that is movement in scene here and it can be occupied in a very small space again important thing to note here is this uh, small intestine has villi which are a kind of these structures within the small intestine so the idea is to increase the surface area more the surface area faster the absorption of the food that would take place now as we said it is supported by uh, the enzymes that are coming from liver and pancreas so you have gall bladder uh, which stores the bile and bile helps in the digestion of fat then you have pancreas that we already talked about acts on the carbohydrates and proteins next to the small intestine you have large intestine all the undigested food and uh, unabsorbed food from the small intestine reaches into large intestine here what is absorbed is water and salt so in the first what was absorbed in the small intestine was the digested food which was absorbed here it is water and salt that is absorbed it is wider and much shorter so you have the ascending um, colon it is also large intestine is also known as colon so you have the ascending colon transverse colon and then the descending colon finally opening into rectum and anus through which you have the process of ejection ejection means external so it moves out that's how you can remember it ingestion is in so it moves in so when you consume food it is known as ingestion when you excrete it out it is known as ejection now sometimes you have uh, a term which is diarrhea that is commonly heard so that's loose watery stool that could be seen and a good remedy to cure out diarrhea is use of ors or oral rehydration solution which is rich in the various nutrient uh, various minerals basically along with salt and sugar so that's how we understand the process of digestion in human beings coming on to the process of digestion in grass eating animals you might go into a garden or an open area where you might see cows sitting around so you might observe them for a while and see even when they are sitting empty they do not have any food nearby you might see a cow is chewing or churning something so that is a different process that takes place in grass eating animals specifically let's talk about cow so its stomach has four components or there are four stomachs that are made up and the first one is known as the rumen now what happens in the rumen is first if you give cow grass it would eat all the grass at once and store it into the rumen now when you have the food that goes into rumen it is in the basically undigested form so rumen and reticulum are the first two stomachs in the cow where it takes in the unabsorbed or undigested food when it is free it would sit and it would bring back that food to the mouth and cud now this cud when it is chewed into final particles further it would go back onto two different stomachs which are known as omasum and ab abomasum where the food is finally fully digested and moves into large intestine now all these animals which consume grass grass is rich in cellulose human have do not have the capacity to digest cellulose so these animals have the capacity to digest cellulose and the grazing animals like cows buffaloes deer quickly ingest or swallow the food and later cut it and chew it a similar process we can see in rabbits that takes place so they have large structure which is known as cecum that lies between esophagus and small intestine where this undigested or semi digested food is kept in
The next important example that we would discuss today is amoeba. Amoeba is rather more interesting. It is a single celled animal commonly seen in pond waters. It has a cell membrane, a nucleus and basically small vacuoles or bubbles that are seen. Now how does amoeba move? Amoeba moves like a slime. So what happens is it has the open legs that move. Now these legs are known as pseudopodia or false feet. So what when they move they capture the food. And this is the new leg that could be seen for a amoeba or the new false fit that could be seen. And this becomes the part of the amoeba itself. So this food is ingested in the food vacuole or the food particle moves in. It is absorbed and finally you have the new pseudopodia that could be seen here. So that's the process of ingestion that takes place in amoeba. So the various processes that we talked about are like these. Now broadly we can say nutrition is a complex process. It requires ingestion of the food, digestion of the food, absorption and assimilation that takes place in the large intestine. So under the large intestine you have assimilation that takes place, small intestine you have the absorption uh, that takes place and finally the ingestion. Again one very important fact is we say Goat, uh, goat milk is much lighter as compared to cow's milk because the goat's milk, the fats that are present there are much simpler and easier to digest and it is considered much lighter as compared to uh, a cow milk. So initially babies are started with goat milk and then they move on to cow milk, those who are unable to digest the cow milk. So those are some of the important concepts that we talk about here. Uh, we'll be continuing our classes on science, so do subscribe to the channel. If you have any doubts, leave those as comment below the video. We'll be more than happy to resolve those. Have a very good day ahead.